Okay guys, I just want to go over uh, what to look for when you're buying a car uh, used off of uh, maybe the side of the road, you want a cheap vehicle for a couple grand, a few things you want to keep in mind. First thing you want to do is don't buy it at night. Take a look at it in the daylight. You want to see it in good sunlight and you want to be able to compare panels to each other to make sure that they all look uniform. If it's been painted, uh, first warning sign, stay away. It's either been in an accident or it's rusty. If one panel's rusty, most likely another panel's rusty and it's on its way out. Um, the tires are very important if you're spending a few grand on a vehicle, um, even eight grand. If the tires are wore, you're looking at could possibly another 800,000 for uh, new boots. So you want to look at the tires, you want to turn them all the way out one, uh, one way and you want to you know, run your, feet, your hands over and make sure that it's wearing evenly. If it's feathered at all where it's cupped, it means it's a bad alignment and that could be worn parts um, and you'd have to replace those suspension parts or again it could be in an accident. So make sure that your boots are in good shape. Underneath the hood, you want to check a few things. Um, First and foremost, you, can, uh, you want to check your transmission fluid. Usually a yellow handle. Uh, you want to look for nice red fluid um, that's uh, not low. And you want to smell it, make sure that it's not burnt. You want to check your engine oil, make sure that it's not low in any means and that it's in good shape, nice and clear, and again, doesn't smell good. Oil isn't as uh, telltale because uh, if there was an issue, they would have changed the oil beforehand. Now you can actually tell the, the, how much your brakes are wore by how much fluid is left in your reservoir. This is the brake fluid reservoir. If your brakes are wore, it means that your pistons are coming out farther and this reservoir will be lower. Uh, if it's full, it's a good sign that your brakes are in good shape, but somebody could have topped up the fluid as well. So what I'm saying is low oil means that the brakes are wore. When the reservoir is full, it means it could, be, could have really good brakes or somebody's topped it off. So you have to take that with a grain of salt. You want to check over belts, general condition of it. You want to check, uh, make sure there's as little corrosion and rust on exhaust and, and aluminum parts. And uh, check your antifreeze at, when it's cold. Make sure that there's no uh, oil or anything in there and it looks nice and green or pink depending on what, what's in there. Now, a good investment is a OBD2 reader. Uh, you can pick these up really cheap now. Uh, this one I paid 45 bucks for. Uh, and every single car built after 99 has a OBD2 port. So underneath the dash is a plug where this plugs in. The Civics are... Right by the console. Turn your ignition on. And best case, you want to look for zero diagnostic uh, codes. You can read the VIN, you can read the codes, so just hit enter. It checks your CAN bus, which is your computer for anything logged, and hopefully it will come up no diagnostic trouble codes. Now that either means that the car is in good shape, they just replaced the battery, or they just cleared the codes. So another way to see w how long it's been since they cleared the codes is to go underneath and wait for a readiness test. Now readiness is important for e-tests. Uh, every emissions monitor has to go through so many cycles before it's complete. So by going through there, and if all of them are complete, you know that the vehicle's been driven a good amount of time since the last uh, time it, that the computer has been cleared. So um, that will also say whether your car is ready for uh, an e-test or not. So you want to look for all these completes. Anything that's supported needs to be complete. Anything that's not supported is not imported. Like a heated cat is not supported. They don't need that for an e-test. That will also save you $30 when you go for your e-test um, knowing that your monitors are ready. So. When you're driving it, you want to turn your fans off, you want to turn your radio off, listen for any noises, anything that ticks or knocks or squeaks or squawks, it's a warning sign that that's probably going to cost you money. Um, don't let the customer uh, talk to you or whoever's selling it, just tell them to be quiet, you want to listen to it, you can talk when you're outside the vehicle. Um, keeping these things in mind hopefully keeps you from buying something that uh, 
is going to be a problem further on, but um, check your reviews online and see what uh, is good about the car, but realize that for every one person that uh, says something bad about the car. There's 200 that are driving it happily but just not posting about it So once you find a car that you like and that you're interested in call a dealership and uh, Or sorry don't call a dealership call a parts store and ask if there's any there's been a lot of parts ordered for this particular car Whether it's got bad wheel bearings bad brakes bad transmission or anything else and that might save you in the long run So yeah, there you go to follow a variety of projects that include conversions and repairs to anything from Ferraris to chainsaws. And check out the Tape Boss, my newest invention that's coming to market. And remember, if you're not filthy, you're not rich.